have a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day and help you through the night. Bring you good music. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. And here's your host. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Hallelujah. Yes. We have to put our trust in him. And there was another thing that was said in that song that said we, it's, it's just a part of going through the process. I can't speak for anyone else, but I know I have a situation that's going on in my life that I realize that I'm just going through the process. The process don't always look good. It don't always feel good. But in the end, it's going to be worth whatever it is you're going through. We're going to say to you, welcome once again to For His Glory. I am here with my producer, Kim and Kim. We're here with the Lord. And again, we say thank you for having us. Thank God for the privilege of being here. I am your host, Brian Blassingame, Apostle Brian Blassingame. And again, thank you for having us and thank you for giving us your ear. Well, actually, this is my first time being back with you since last year. So we must wish each and every one of you that's under the sound of my voice, Happy New Year. And many, many blessings to you. We pray that uh, this year be very prosperous to you. We pray that uh, you be well, you be healed, and that you go forth and you receive all the things that God has stored up for you in the name of Jesus. Well, tonight, for his glory, I uh, I have a word, of course. Uh, it's one that uh, God laid on my heart uh, a week or two ago. I was sitting here in the house, and a, a thought <clears throat> crept up on me, and I knew it wasn't a godly thought. <clears throat> it was one that I, I felt that um, the enemy was trying to to plot and uh, and set up some kind of strategy. I just sensed it in the spirit. One thing that I love about God is that most times whenever the enemy shows his head, God immediately kicks in. And that's what he did when this thought came to me. Immediately, I began to ask the Lord to hide me, to hide me. Because sometimes some situations get bigger than what we are, bigger than who we are. So and 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 who we are in in, in even in God, you know, it, it, it just seems to uh, exalt itself, and it seems to magnify itself to be larger than life itself. So I remember my spirit man crying out, saying, "God, hide me." So in hearing that, I went to the Word of the Lord, Psalms twenty-seven. So that's when we're going to start out tonight. But before we start, I'd like to have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the precious name of Jesus. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you, Lord God, for the awesome woman of God, Kim and Kim, who's here with us, my producer. We thank you for all that you're doing. We thank you, Lord God, for how she's going forth and how she's giving out herself encouraging words through the morning. We just thank you, Lord God, for how she's moving by your spirit. We thank you, Lord God, that there is blessings stored up and blessings being released for her, Lord God. Continue to bless her family. And Father God, in Jesus' name, even as we go forth this night, we pray that the that the word that go forth fall on, fall on good ears and that it fall on, on, on good soul. And we pray, Lord God, that it bring forth fruit. You said you pray that our fruit will remain and that it will multiply. So we thank you, Lord God, for each and every thing that's going forth that is of you that's going to bring forth fruit. We thank you that it will remain, and we thank you, Lord God, that it will multiply. In the name of Yeshua, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Looking at Psalms 27, my God, I'm glad this thing starts out the way it does because we, we kind of touched on something in the Bible study uh, even last night. Uh, it said uh, uh, Psalms 27, 5. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock, set me up, up, not down, up. He shall set me up upon a rock. The sixth verse says, and now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. 
Therefore will I offer in the tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. So let's go back and look at the fifth verse where it says, In the time of trouble he shall hide me. Yes. A lot of times we, we don't understand why different things come into our life. A lot of times we don't understand why trouble tends to come into our life. But uh, it's self-explanatory when we look into that particular word. It says that in the time of trouble, he shall hide me. Now, I remember growing up, and that's why I said, this is what I'm saying, um, what I'm saying. Uh, I remember growing up. There would be times that I would do something I knew I didn't have no business doing. <laughs> I'm quite sure everybody else has done it. Some of you still growing, still doing the same old thing. Do stuff you ain't got no business doing. And then when trouble comes, you cry, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. I mean, how many how many of us can remember some of the nights that you uh, drank, you drunk that drink that you wasn't supposed to drink? Yeah, that that, that slow gin fizz, that 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 rum and coke, that that seven and seven, that 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 raw that 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 uh, uh, Singapore sling and that that B fifty two and all that, and and then when it got you in trouble, we when you was hugging that that porcelain throne, and it felt like you was throwing up the last bit of of you. From the inside out, you cried out, Lord, help. And you said, God, please don't let this wipe me out. God, if you if you if you just forgive me this time, I won't do it no more. I won't touch it no more. Now at the time you was honest and you were sincere and you made that promise to God, but you didn't know you was lying. <laughs> Week later. If, if if a week later, maybe three days later, there you were again in the same position, same predicament, holding on the same porcelain throne once more and again, and it seems like you're giving up and heaving up your last. But in that time of trouble, even though you were wrong, even though you didn't have no business doing what you was doing, God showed up in that time of trouble. Now the reason I say I'm glad that I'm, I'm, I'm glad that it kind of opened up there is because we, we we discussed uh, we discussed a little bit in a particular Bible study last night where you, where there are people that still have this mindset that they feel like they can just do what they want to do in this and put God up on the shelf. They feel like you can just put Him up on the shelf, and as long as they're not in no trouble. As long as things are not happening, then they're good. They're just good. They just hey, everything is hunker door. But when they get in trouble, they want to pull God down off the shelf, and they want to think like they got a a, a real relationship with God because He's getting them out of trouble. And 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 I'm just here to tell you that that's not like that's not how God works. Yeah, He'll get you out of the jam first. A few, you know, quite a few times, but there's no come a time that he's not going to ask you to, to, to give him a forgive me, a forgive me story. There's going to come the time he's going to call you to repentance, and that wasn't my 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 that wasn't my first uh, point that I was going to bring out. But since we're there, I'm, I might as well shake that tree while we're there. So people need to get the, the mindset and the concept out of their mind that God is nobody's yo-yo. You know, y'all know how y'all, you know how yo-yos are. You, you sling them down and you pull them right back up and they come back up in your hand. And sometimes you can make them hesitate and, and, and they just sit down and spin as long as you want them to spin and then you, you can pull them back. God not like that. God God is not that. He, God is not like that. And, and, and I believe we're coming into a time and in a season now to where God is, oh, my God. He, he, he's uh, less tolerant in that area. But anyway, he said, for those who are honest and those who are, for, for, for those who are honest and those are 
that are, are sincere. David said, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In his pavilion. So I looked up the word of pavilion, and it talked about it's a summer house. It's used as a shelter or a large garden. Now notice this. A shelter. Not only is God protecting you from that trouble, but he has given you a shelter, a shelter to run into. Shelter not only protecting you from whatever the trouble might be or whatever the trouble is, but it's a shelter that provides even your necessities. Yeah, I say that. It's a it's a provision. It's a place that pro- provides shelter. The rain it will keep whatever is at you off of you. If you can just run into God's provision, oh God, I'm about to get into something now. If you can just run into God's provision, yeah, I'm gonna get into something now. It says not only is it a shelter, but it's a it's a large garden. So. Not only now is it a shelter, not only is it providing and keeping you like a a place of warmth, but there inside of that place, inside of that summer house, there is a garden, provision in the place where you're, you're running into. During this time of trouble, there is a place that you're running into, a place in God that you're running into that God not only going to Hide you, he's not only going to protect you, but he's also going to provide for you during this time of trouble. So I must hit this. What we are what we have seen, what are, what we're still seeing in some cases is that the enemy has thrown something out that we're not familiar with, we hadn't seen before, and instead of us running into the place where there's safety, instead of us going into the pavilion, I know, man, somebody might want to throw rocks at me on this. We don't want to go into the house of the Lord. God. Yeah, I said that. Even in the place where, where I worship, I brought up the 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 situation I had brought up a scenario, you know, back when I was in the world. And I use this scenario because in a lot of cases you have a lot of saints who are still paying tithes. They're not going to church, they're paying tithes, they're paying tithes. So your church is still open, your church is still able to function, but you don't want to go. Oh, God. You don't want to go to a safe, to a safe place. You, you don't want because of fear. And God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but love, power, that, and of, that of a sound mind. But, but we don't, we, we're not putting our trust in the Lord. We're not wanting to run into that, that, that secret place. We're not wanting to run into that pavilion. Even though it's set up for us, when a lot of us not not trying to, no, we're not trying to feel that. But I said that to say this. I can remember a time that, and like I say, some people are paying tithes of the church, still up and still running and still functioning, but, but uh, but a, a large percentage just don't want to uh uh-uh, uh don't want to get out, and that's because uh, a lot of them got accustomed to church over Facebook. We got accustomed to doing church over 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 call in lines and Zoom and this that and another. But the word tells us to forsake not the assembly of the brethren coming together. There's there's something that happens when we come together. When the enemy has launched this thing. To bring division and bring separation to the body of Christ. But I can remember, I keep saying this, I can remember back when I was in the world. And I can remember sometimes I spent maybe back then it was like $7.50 a 
eleven dollars and fifty cents. We usually see four, five top name band brand bands. That's back when they made music. There wasn't no recordings, there wasn't no lip sync. They were making music then. My point is though, is that if I paid my money to get there to that show, when it was time for that door to open and I have already paid my money, you better believe and bet your last dollar I was gonna be there. And what I'm saying is to some of us believers that if if your church is open, you might as well go, especially if you're paying your tithe. It's your hiding place. It's your secret place. It's your provision. It's where you're going to gain strength. I guarantee you, there's been too many times that I have gone through too many different struggles, too many different battles, too many different assaults by the enemy, too many different attacks by witchcraft that I said to myself, God, if I can just make it to your house, if I can just make it to the house of God, everything will be all right. I think a lot of us has got away from the mindset that there is a blessing in the pressing. A lot of us have forgotten there is a blessing in the pressing. If you press your way, there's going to be a blessing in that pressing. Pavilion. And he said that we can run into it. And he said in another scripture that once they run into it, they are safe. Remind me of some of the games we used to play as kids. Hide and go seek. You had a base. Everybody go run while somebody was counting. And if you got back and you hit that base before the person who was counting, you were safe. Same thing with God. You can run into that pavilion, and once you get into that pavilion, you are safe. Listen, he said, in the secret place of his tabernacle shall he hide me. Now, not only in the tabernacle, once you get in the tabernacle, now he got a secret place inside the tabernacle that he can hide you. And then not only can he hide you, not only can he provide for you, not only can he uh, 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 give you uh, rest, because the second part of that that pavilion definition says it's a building of sports ground used for charging and taking refreshment. Even in the spiritual realm, even in this thing called the pavilion, <laughs> excuse me, it's designed to refresh you. It's, a, it's designed to give you a charge, a real new charge. Like, you know, sometimes you better run dead, run down, run low. You put a charge to it. You put a boost to it. And you charge it up and it's ready to go again. In that secret place, in that pavilion, comes healing, comes encouragement, comes all sorts of different things that will equip you so that you can go on and not only go on, but be able to help someone else go on. Not only that, in the sixth verse, he said, and now shall my head be lifted above my enemies round and about me. Now, I, and sometime or another, we all have enemies. I know for a long time, I fooled myself and tricked myself and thought I didn't have no enemies because I was messing around and going around messing with nobody. Little did I know. And a lot of times, enemies just don't let you know that they're your enemy. Sometimes they, 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 there's some that, that hold grudges against you, and you didn't even know they was holding any grudges against you. You never said nothing out of the way to them. You never done anything to them. They just don't like you. And a lot of times what they don't like is, the God that's in you because they can't understand the God that's in you. But God is saying, if, you, if we get into this place, get into this pavilion, into this secret place in him, he said not only will he hide you, not only protect you, not only will he provide for you, not only will he give you refreshing, he said, now, he said, now he will lift my head above my enemies round about me. 
meaning elevation, meaning exaltation. He said, if you humble yourselves in due season, you will be exalted in due season. A lot of our problems is we don't want to, who we. We don't want God to exalt us. We want to exalt ourselves. <sighs> a lot of us don't want to do that thing called wait upon the Lord and renew our strength. We don't want to mount up with wings of eagles. We don't want to run and not faint. We 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 want to. <laughs> we don't want to do that wait thing. A lot of us. Don't want to do that weight thing. But a lot of us don't want to do that weight thing. But look, David said this. He says, now once he exalted my head around about me, above above my enemies, and therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. Look at how he said that. He said, I'm going to offer it up. Ain't nobody going to have pride out of me. Ain't nobody going to have pull it out of me. Ain't nobody going to have to ask me over and over and over again, is there any testimonies? Does anybody even want to give the Lord praise? Because I know God done something for you yesterday. I know he done something for you throughout this week. There ought to be a praise in the house. David said, because he has lifted my head above my situation, and go deeper. Because he lifted my head above my situation, my circumstance. Yeah. Because he lifted my head above my circumstances. Because his circumstances, not only they look real, not only they feel real, but circumstances are real. They would say, because he lifted me up above that, I'm going to offer up my sacrifice. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou said, seek my faith, my heart said unto thee, thy faith, Lord, will I Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not. Neither forsake me, O God, of my salvation. God is letting us know that in the time of trouble, and when we look around, especially in this day and time, there's plenty of trouble. The thing is, though, we must put our confidence, we must put our trust in the Lord. Psalms 18 and 2 says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress. He's my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. He's all that. He's my rock. He's my fortress. Fortress is a place of safety. Again, fortress is, is but fortress, you just walk up in, in a fortress. He said, and he's my deliverer. He's my God. He's my strength in whom I will trust. I see certain certain things sometimes that I see, and it alarms me when I see people put their trust in the wrong thing. To me, it's, it's, it's almost like a, a real setup for a for a drive by, because the word tells us, "War upon those who punt, who lean upon the arm of the flesh." I see so many people sometimes they lean and they put so much trust in a particular individual. And I'll be honest with you, it in a lot of cases it strikes 
a place of envy in the heart of God. Because the Bible tells us to trust in the Lord with all our minds, all our heart, all our soul, with all our might. He's the only one we can really trust anyway. So why are we going to trust our, why, why are we going to put our trust in, so that's why we have so much heartache. There's a term that, that, that's floating around out there that, that y'all hear it, y'all heard it, have experienced it. It's called church hurt. And, all, and, 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 and honestly, the only reason we allow or get church hurt is because at some point we took our eyes off and we started putting our trust more in man than we did. Yeah. than we did with God. Woo. I can remember being in that predicament. And I remember God would send this one particular pastor by and he would prophesy to me and he would prophesy over and over again from time to time about trust trust not in trust not in man. Trust not in man. And I, and I felt like he might be missing it because I felt like at the time I, I wasn't trusting me. But I but I realized that as everything started unfolding, God was revealing to me was that I had put too much trust in my leader because it was my leader turned around and did the most damage to me than anybody else that I had ever came across. And that church that and that, that hurt came from within within the church. It's a life lesson. I don't harbor any illness. I don't I don't harbor any 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 um unforgiveness. I look at it and I chalk it up as a life life lesson as to this is something I'm not supposed to do. This is something I will not do. Sometimes the pain comes so when that pain comes it reminds you of what not to do. When you come to the place of where God is elevating you, you can look back at the places where you got hurt, and before you get ready to operate in that same thing, you will remember how you felt when it was done to you. God is my strength in whom I will trust. He's my buckler. He's my horn, or he is the horn on my salvation. I'm going to stop right there because there's many times, you know, we think a lot of times that he's our Savior when we first got saved or when we first gave our heart to the Lord. But when you look over your life, you will see several different times where God came in and he saved you from something that was meant to destroy you whether it was mentally, whether it was physically, whether it was uh, financially or whatever, something at some point or another, if you look, if you study, if you think back, if you meditate, you can think of different times that God came in and intervened and saved you out of something at one time or another. I can truly understand why he's called the Savior because he don't save just once. He saved to the very end. He is my Savior. He is my high tower. Third verse says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. David is just taken in advance that if I just praise God, I'm going to be saved from my enemies. Instead of looking at the situation, instead of crying about the situation, instead of complaining about the situation, David says, I'm going to praise him. And whatever's working against me, whoever's working against me, whatever force may be working against me, there's a lot that goes on 
through pray. I can understand why the word says that our weapons are not carnal, but they're pull, they're mighty and pulling down strongholds. Imagination that will exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Because we have several different weapons. They're not carnal. They seem foolish. They seem foolish to the natural man. Because he's not of the spirit. He's of the spirit. They are mighty. One of them is prayer. Another one is fasting. Another one is praise. Another one is worship. So, uh, another one, a lot of people don't talk about it, don't get into that. Sowing a seed. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you can sow a seed and break some stuff up. You sow that seed in the right time, in the right place, in the, in the right soil, you can break some stuff up. I know I've had it done. I've done it, I've done it more times than once. Watch God move. Hallelujah. He said, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy. Besides, the Lord is worthy to be praised. Oh, we do it all the time. Favorite football team? Favorite basketball team? Hockey? Soccer? Volleyball? We'll throw some praise out there. When it comes to God, sometimes we don't want to give him praise. We'll sit up in this house and fold our arms. I don't want to give God no praise. Lord, help us. I don't know who I'm talking to. But he's worthy to be praised. Psalms 18 and 10. Did I do that right? Yeah. And he rode upon the cherub and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. And he made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of stars. At the brightness that was before him, the Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them, and he shot out lightning and discomforted them. Then the channels of waters were seen, and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke. O oh Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. He's talking about how he covered, how he fought for the children of Israel. Hail turned into fire. The different plagues. He gave them a cloud that guided them. They kept them warm during the night and gave them shelter and kept them cool during the day in a desert place, a desert place, a place where there ain't supposed to be no light, where everything out there is pretty much dead except for cactus and other things that are designed to, to live out there. But yet there, there it is, God has given them a provision, a place of safety. I'm just saying, in the time of trouble, there's no need for us to actually be walking around in fear, as some would have us. Let us be encouraged that we have a God. Psalms 46 and 1 to the chief musician of the sons of Korah a song of Alma, God is our refuge and strength. He's a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not I fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Say, Lord, I will not fear. I know he's a very present help in the time of trouble. Listen, we can't allow fear to operate in our lives. Fear will paralyze us. Fear will paralyze us. Fear will strip us of many things. So we can't allow fear 
to operate in our lives. We must be able to realize and know that God has us. The blood of Jesus has been applied. We must remember that when the deaf angels see the blood, he must pass over. We're not talking enough of this stuff. We're not speaking enough of this stuff. We're not teaching enough of this stuff. But it's the word. And heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word, his word will never, his word will never pass away. Psalms 27 and 2. Probably should have done that while I was here. 27. And I may have wrote that wrong. No, I didn't. He says, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, I need to go back and look that up. Enemies and my foes came upon me to eat of my flesh. They stumbled and fell. The reason I said I need to go back and look that up was because something stood out to me. He said, even when my enemies and my foes, to me, you know, those two, those two different words, <laughs> should actually mean one should be one. I, I, I but there's got to be different because they use two different words. So I got to look up and find what's the difference between the enemy and a foe is. <laughs> but I know both of them are against you because you know because a lot of the, the scripture reads is that when my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumble and they fail. There may be some who plotting against you right now. Wanting you to fall, wanting you to fail, wanting not want to see you succeed. But when they come to touch or to eat of your flesh, they will stumble and fall. It reminds me of a prophet that the Lord sent to a particular city, and he told him and gave him his instructions on what it was supposed to do. He was supposed to tear down an altar, an altar to Baal. And when he spoke against that altar, the king reached out to grab him. And as he reached out to grab him, the king's arm withered up. People have to realize it's a dangerous thing to touch God's anointing. And sometimes we have to realize that who you think is anointing of the very one that's anointed. Don't think just because he's holding the door at the church and he's usher, he ain't no more anointed than you are because you might be a trustee, a deacon, or a pastor, or whatever. <laughs> that ain't the way God sees it. You can touch not my anointed. If it's anointed, if it's anointed just to clean the restroom. Touch not my anointed to do my prophets no harm. We have to exercise the love of cross. I mean, the love of Christ across the board. Last one, Isaiah 41. What is one in 10? Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee. With the right hand of my righteousness. I remember when we went from 1999 into the year 2000, and everybody was kind of like up in the uproar because we've never been in the, two, the year 2000 before. And they were thinking this wasn't going to be able to handle it, computers weren't going to be able to handle this. So oh, everybody was looking for all kind of catastrophes to happen. And I remember the Lord sending this word. Said I not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with my right hand of my righteousness. He's with us, y'all. Not only will he just be with us, he's going to strengthen us, 
and he don't want us to be dismayed. He don't want us to be confused about who we are and who we are in him. He not only go be with us, he said, I'm going to send you, and not only I'm going to send you, I'm going to help you, and I'm going to uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. I can understand it when he say right hand of righteousness. You know, I'm I'm right-handed, so I, I do most things with my right hand. Uh, I don't have that much strength in my in my left, but at my right, I can I can pop, I can I can do quite a few things with that right, but it's not in my left. He's assuring us that he's not gonna hold us with the weakest part of him. He go he go use his right hand to strengthen us so that we don't be dismayed. But whatever may come our way, he's still gonna be our God. He still go protect us. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with our heart. It says to trust him. Lean not to thy own understanding. Acknowledge him in all our ways and he'll direct our path. It also tells us, trust the Lord with all our might. For he is faithful who has promised. I don't know about nobody else. I think I'm going I'm I'm to slice that one out for myself and chew on that one myself for a while. Because I know what he's promised me. I know it's going to come to pass. I'm thanking God for it in advance. In the name of Jesus. The word that we brought forth, we pray that it find a resting place in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, in your spirit. We pray that just as it says in Psalm 91, 10 through 12, it says, we pray and we decree that no evil come nigh thee. Pray that no evil come to thee and no plague come nigh thee nor thy dwelling place. We cover you with the blood of Jesus. Now, if you're under the sign of my roof and you have not received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you know about him, but you don't know him. Now is a good time to start your 2022 off right. If you'd like to give your heart to the Lord, just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you as a son. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe that on the third day you raised him from the dead. I believe he came back from hell with all power in his hands. I confess this with my mouth. I believe it in my heart. You said, if I do so, I shall be saved. So, Father, I thank you for saving me. I thank you for coming into my heart. I thank you for coming into my heart and making me a new creature through Christ Jesus. I pray, I decree, behold, all things have become new. The old has passed away. I renounce Satan. It has no place in my life from this day forward. In Jesus' your sure name, I do pray. I believe you, God. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. Now, if you pray this prayer with me, you can reach me easily on Facebook. You can reach me on Snapchat. You can reach me on Instagram. I'll be glad to pray with you, pray for you. We pray that you find a church, a Bible-believing church, who operates in the faith to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, we say thank you for listening to For His Glory. And again, we say unto you, Kimmy Kim, we love you. We appreciate you. We adore you. In Jesus' name, may you be blessed. For the rest, whatever you do, remember, let's do it in decency and in order. But most of all, let's do it for His glory. Until next week, God bless. Amen. We're out. Thank you. Your love that lifted me 
Your love that look at me, your love that look at me, your love that look at me, when I can take it, when I can make it, oh, when I can take it, yes. When I can make it, oh, 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 what love, yeah, what peace, yeah, what joy he gives, oh, yeah. I was thinking. Deep it in for from the people Despairing uh, cry from the water, he lived at me. Oh. 